If the patient has responded to the treatment and their CPIS or equivalent has, has decreased, if the patient is clinically doing better, then and if the patient is responding to the antibiotics based on culture results, and the culture results confirm that the antibiotics you chose are the correct ones, then there is no problem. The problem happens that if the CPIS is increasing, or if, and if the patient is not doing, uh, is not improving clinically, uh, particularly if you don't have cultures, in that case, you're going to have to think of other infections. Maybe the patient doesn't have a pneumonia has an infection elsewhere, or if the patient has a pneumonia that doesn't use, respond to your usual antibiotics, namely viral, fungal, and mycobacterial, and if there is a complication that has happened uh, uh, from the pneumonia or from the treatment of pneumonia that, uh, that you haven't accounted for, usually something like a, uh, an empyema. For Viral pneumonias that usually present with an atypical infiltrate, that means a diffuse infiltrate, patchy, uh, and or, or reticular, uh, those patients usually are sicker than you expect them to be from uh, a bacterial atypical pneumonia. Uh, the treatment, of course, is not going to be antibiotics. It's going to be antiviral treatment, and it has to be started uh, uh, pretty early, um, and your patients are most likely to uh, to require intensive care uh, monitoring. For fungal pneumonias, these are patients who are uh, generally immunocompromised, uh, particularly cancer patients and cancer treatment patients. Of course, those patients are going to need a, an antifungal treatment, uh, and in, a, in addition to that, probably uh, intensive care monitoring because they are usually sicker than patients with bacterial pneumonia. The mycobacteria, including TB and uh, non-tuberculous mycobacteria, uh, those patients are going to be less sick than their counterparts with bacterial pneumonia unless they are immunocompromised and they have uh, something like miliary TB. And uh, those patients' treatments are going to require uh, TB medications or some specific uh, antibiotics for non-tuberculous non mycobacterial organisms, and it's going to require very lengthy, lengthy treatment, several months in time. And like we said earlier, if the person fails to respond, and it's not because they have an infection elsewhere, but because they do develop a complication from, from pneumonia, this uh, complication is uh, most of the time either a pulmonary abscess or an empyema. The reason this doesn't respond very well to antibiotics alone because the focus of infection is not going to be well perfused, which means antibiotics are not going to get to the area of infection, um, and this requires surgical uh, or uh, percutaneous drainage. Uh, in the case of a pulmonary abscess, you, uh, you will find that out um, when you do a CAT scan to follow up on someone whose infiltrates are worsening, not improving, especially if they're clinically deteriorating. Um, for empyema, it's usually an effusion that, uh, that, that um, uh, when it's tapped, it gives you a purulent, gives, gives out a purulent material with high LDH, uh, low glucose, and, um, and low pH. Plus, another type of complication, which is not really complication of the pneumonia, uh, would be uncovering. Treating the pneumonia results in uncovering an underlying process, for example, lung malignancy, uh, where if somebody has a tumor occluding an airway, they develop a pneumonia beyond that occlusion, which is called post-obstructive pneumonia. And after treating the pneumonia, you uncover the obstruction in the airway that does not resolve with just antibiotics. The real, the real take-home points here are, does my patient have a pneumonia? This is still the main question. You will probably end up treating a lot of patients who don't have pneumonia just because you don't know if they have it or not. Uh, because the treatment has to be timely within six hours and has to be appropriate. But remember, once you've, once you've done the treatment, you're not stuck with it. Once you've started the treatment, you're not stuck with it. You can assess for a response. If the person responds very well, very quickly, uh, 
then most likely it's, uh, it's not a pneumonia or it's a pneumonia that responds to simple antibiotics for a short period of time, such as community-acquired pneumonias. And at that point, you will have to decide how you have to decide on de-escalating the antibiotics, which means if you've started a coverage that's too broad, you will, you will have to narrow, it's best for the patient to narrow the antibiotics to cover uh, usual community-acquired uh, pneumonias, um, even though you might have started with a broad-spectrum antibiotic um, on presentation. And the final point, uh, which we didn't really address at length in the slides, is that there is a role to preventing pneumonias in uh, hospitalized patients um, in addition to using a pneumovax for everybody who has COPD or everybody who is uh, older than 65 years old and in addition to giving everybody you know including yourself a, a flu vaccine and that is to treat hospitalized patients with non-invasive ventilation instead of invasive ventilation because that carries a lower risk for pneumonia to elevate the head of the bed at 45 degrees, 45 degrees if the person is intubated, and to de-escalate de unnecessary antibiotics so that you don't encourage the growth of um, resistant organisms.